Hello everyone, welcome to session four of LTech 654 Programming Games and Simulations. In this week's overview video, I want to talk about four things. First up, we have a bit of housekeeping to attend to. Some of you have shared that you're running into the limits of the 14-day free trial of Loom. Now, I want to point out that we'll be using Loom all semester and that there is a five-minute limit to your recordings that comes with the free quote-unquote starter plan that Loom offers. Now, I want to emphasize you do not need to purchase Loom just for this class. If you like Loom and you can use it in other places in your life, then by all means, go ahead and make the purchase. But you don't have to. There are two possible workarounds for you to consider. One is you can apply for the Loom for Education discount. They're really generous with that discount, and you can use your hawaii.edu license to apply for that. So that's an option for quite a few of you in this class. The other option, of course, is to keep your videos to about the five-minute mark, which is fine, as long as you feel like you're covering everything you need to. And then finally, as some of you have already been doing, is you just submit two videos. You have one video that's five minutes, then another video that's two minutes and change or whatever it is that you need to cover. And when you post to Canvas, all you do is instead of just embedding one video, you embed both your videos. It's super simple, keeps you on the free plan. I just wanted to talk about this because we will be using Loom all semester. Now, next up is assignment deadlines and peer review. It's important that you pay attention to course deadlines, and the vast majority of you are doing a great job to this. However, because of the critical reflection and peer review assignments, submitting late work impacts your classmates. So you have a responsibility that if you're submitting late for whatever reason, to let me know, and most importantly, to contact your assigned classmates so they're not stressed out about when are you going to post so they can peer review your work. To address this issue, I've decided to make some changes. For the peer reviews, you will not be penalized if your assigned classmate has not posted. That's no fault of yours, so there's nothing you can do about it. You won't lose credit. To operationalize this, what I've done is I've added three options to the peer review form. The peer review form now uses skip logic, and it asks after you select who you're reviewing, it says my peer's video reflection was submitted on time. You can answer yes and move on to the next item. Or you can answer no, but I have enough time to review it. If you click that and click next, it will take you to the next section. The third, and this is really the new option, is no, and I don't have enough time to review. It. This will indicate to me that you tried to peer review your classmate's critical reflection, but it wasn't posted on time and you're not able to complete your peer review. So now you have more options for managing peer review. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and we'll take it from there. All right, let's move on. Next up, we have Beats Empire, which was related to Critical Reflection 3. I really enjoyed your analysis of Beats Empire. It seems like most of you really got into playing the game and trying to figure out what it was all about and reflecting on the formal elements of games and how this particular instance of an educational game matches our definition of what a game actually is. And as I watched through the your reflection videos, a couple of interesting points stood out to me. One is this idea that games are really interdisciplinary artifacts. And so some of you were focusing on technical aspects. Others of you were focusing on aesthetic aspects or even pedagogical aspects. Some of you even rated it on a usability scale. And so games are complex and they involve a lot of talents in a lot of different areas. And I think that really surfaced in viewing all of your critical reflections this week. Another interesting idea is this idea that players bring their own goals to games. One of you pointed out that you were really interested in creating a diverse music label. So you had a hip hop artist, a pop artist, an R&B artist, so on and so forth. Whereas others focused on a particular type of music label, such as a hip hop label. So this is a really good example of players bringing their own goals and intentions to the world that is a game. 
And then finally, a lot of you question the playability of this game, and more importantly, the replayability of this particular game. And some of you argued that actually, once you figured out how to play Beats Empire, it really felt like more of a puzzle and connected to Fullerton's definition of a puzzle. And others of you felt it was a little too mathematical. And once you figured out how to quote unquote solve the mathematical equation, the game didn't have much more to offer after that. And I think those are valid things to think about and valid critiques of Beat's Empire. Of course, we have to complement that perspective with the idea of an educational game and perhaps a game that actually isn't too deep and doesn't go on for too long may have some advantages given the tight schedule that we know most educators are dealing with. And so it would be interesting to ask the designers of this game if that was intentional or not. But really excellent reflections. Thank you for all that you brought to the table this week. Now, next up, I want to talk about the next part of games that we'll be focused on, which are the dramatic elements. And of course, last week, we focused on formal elements of games. And you read about them, that these are the elements that form the structure of a game. And we need these elements in order for games to be games. Now, interestingly, several of you pointed out in your critical reflections that Beats Empire has all of these elements. And of course, by definition, because Beats Empire is a game, then it should have all of these formal elements. This week, we're focused on dramatic elements, and Fullerton and colleagues argue that dramatic elements are the elements that give context to gameplay, overlaying and integrating the formal elements of the system, remember, games are systems, into a meaningful experience. And so if you want to have context in gameplay and you want that gameplay to be a meaningful experience, you need to have these dramatic elements. And what are those elements? Well, there are seven of them, according to Fullerton. Challenge, play, premise, character, story, world building, and dramatic arc. And so you can reflect back a little bit, and some of you already went into this with your reflections, about which of these dramatic elements Beats Empire possesses in order to make it, ideally, a meaningful experience to play. And based on your reflection, several of you felt it was a meaningful experience. So we'll be reading about dramatic elements this week. And finally, we are going to focus on some hands-on with Godot. And we're actually going to start creating things, which I know is a huge relief to to a whole bunch of you. And so specifically, what are we going to learn? Well, we're going to learn how to specify a root node. Every project in Godot has to have what we call the root node. And so we'll learn how to specify that and some of the decisions inherent in that decision-making process. From there, we're going to be introduced to the idea of a scene tree, and we're going to learn how to take a root root node and add additional nodes to create a tree of objects or nodes that make up our Godot project. And of course, nodes are the building blocks of Godot games. And so we're going to learn how to browse all of the pre-built nodes that come packaged with the Godot game engine. And of course, these pre-built nodes are what make engines like this so powerful and relatively easy to get started working with. And then finally, we're going to learn how to create a main scene. Godot has to have a main scene. In other words, the scene that starts when the player actually plays the game. So we'll be looking at these four points in our hands-on with Godot. Okay, that's all for this overview video. Have a great week, and I'll see you in Canvas.